What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now a few weeks ago I picked up this JDM K24A engine from an engine importer and today we're going to go over the details of this motor. The differences of the RBB designations, the game plan of how we're going to swap it in the project CB9, what parts we'll need, and most importantly why I'm moving on from the H22 engine and switching over the K-Series platform. Let's go ahead and get this video started. All right, first things first, here's the JDM K24A engine. Now I believe this is from a Honda Odyssey Absolute because it had a weird engine cover when I bought this thing. Plus on top of that, it had a power steering pump. Now if I bought this engine from a European Honda Accord, it doesn't have the power steering pump from I believe. I think those are electric power steering. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyways, right under here, it says K24A on the block. So that's what we're looking for, that's the most important thing. And over here on the head, it says RBB4. Now, what does the RBB mean? All right, so the difference is with these RBB engines with one and two versus three and four is one and two is the earlier versions. Plus I think three and four is from the Honda Odyssey Absolute. Now the one and two has 200 horsepower and the RBB three and four has 205 horsepower. And that's due to the fact that the valves, I believe on the intake side are one millimeter larger. I believe that's the differences when I'm reading. So anyways, if you're shopping for a K24A engine, try and get the RBB three and four because you get a free five horsepower upgrade. Anyhow, let's go over the details of this engine. So as you can see, the wiring harness is obviously cut. This wiring harness is no good. This will be removed from the engine. And the wiring harness we need is from a 2002 to 2004 Acura RSX base model or a 2002 to 2005 Honda Civic EP3. Mainly the fact that this is a drive-by-wire throttle right here. So as you can see this big wiring harness right here on the throttle body, we don't want that. So we want a mechanical throttle body with the butterfly valve. And speaking of the butterfly valve and the throttle body, we'll be changing out this throttle body right here because this is drive-by-wire throttle. So we're looking for an 02 to 04 Acura RSX. And we're also looking for an 03 to 05 Honda Accord that will work as well because that's a mechanical throttle body. So, so far we're going to change out the harness or we're going to change out the throttle body. And it looks like the thermostat has been removed from this engine. So we'll be putting a new thermostat on here. Now all the pulley system is undamaged. Plus on top of that, it came with a power steering pump and it came with the alternator as well. So that's two less things to worry about. And some people will actually change out this main crank right here for a smaller one. I think I'm going to stick with this one for the time being right now. So there's nothing wrong with this. And then obviously we're going to be getting some new hoses right now, power steering, coolant hoses and whatnot. So obviously these cut hoses are no good. You know, there's another cut coolant hose right there from when it was extracted from the donor vehicle. But I don't know if you guys can see on camera how clean this thing is, but I mean, this engine is really immaculate. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with JDM engines, JDM engines are known to have between 35 to 65,000 miles from what I understand. And this engine right here looks like it's probably got, I don't know, I'm guessing 40,000 or less. I mean, this thing is really clean. And as I told you guys on the video on shopping, I mean, the oil is very clean. Plus on top of that, you got a Honda oil filter. So I think this engine was well taken care of. I mean, look at the engine block right here, how clean this thing is. I'm really impressed of the condition of this motor. Now, as you can see between the plate of the engine stand and the engine block, you got this flex plate right there. And that will definitely be removed because this is gonna be a six speed conversion right here. So we're gonna bolt on the flywheel and put a clutch on there and made up a six speed transmission to this motor. Now the goal for this engine build to go into project CB9 is to keep things simple and reliable. So I'm not gonna to do too much performance to this motor. You know, I don't plan to do an all wheel drive conversion or a turbo, never say never. I mean, we could do a turbo down the road, but let's just start with the basics and get this thing fully functional into project CB9 before we start thinking about a turbo build. Okay, now one thing about the K-series engines versus the F-series and H-series is I believe these engines are taller. So as you can see how this oil pan just goes down right here. So it can be dangerous for a lowered car. So this is gonna definitely need custom engine mounts. Now there's two mount companies I know out there. There's Innovative, which I'll never use by the way. Had a bad experience with them. And then Hasport. Hasport did have a kit out there, 
but they've actually stopped selling them due to the fact that they're redeveloping the kit. So from what I heard is actually they're making a new kit which will raise the engine into the CB platform, which is a good thing. So you have additional clearance on the oil pan versus the ground right there. So we'll definitely be using Hasport mounts when we put in the Project CB9. Now I've had great success with Hasport mounts, including my Acker RSX, and I believe I got two Hasports in the Project CB9 right now, and they're phenomenal mounts. And another thing about this motor, as you can see, there's no AC compressor, and I don't think we're gonna run AC on this motor. I mean, I don't drive that car really in the summertime, that's dead heat. I usually just drive this thing when the sun goes down and go to the gym and grocery store and whatnot, but there's no need to put an AC compressor on this to make the AC system fully functional. So if I decide to do it down the road, I believe the mounts are down there. So no AC for this car right here. Okay, some of the things that we need to take care of before this engine is dropped into Project CB9 is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the valve cover and I'll remove the timing cover right here. The timing chain should be good, but however, their weak spot on these engines is the timing chain tensioner. So while this thing is out of the car, makes things a lot easier to work on, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the timing chain tensioner. That's my plan at least. I might have second thoughts down the road, but that's the plan, timing chain tensioner replacement, since this thing is on the engine stand right now. Okay, so now that we've spoken in full detail about the K24A engine we got from the JDM importer, Let's go ahead and pop the hood on Project CB9 and show you the game plan is in order to get this thing swapped in. Alrighty guys, a familiar face for most of you guys. The H22 has been swapped into Project CB9. Now the H22, it's been a great motor so far. I mean, the car still runs. It's just got low compression on two of the cylinders. So I'll still be driving this car for the interim until we get all the parts ready for the K-swap. But, you know, the car still runs fine. Okay, but anyhow, once we get this engine removed from Project CB9, basically the K-Series is gonna sit closer to the passenger side right here, and the transmission will sit on the driver's side. So that's the main difference between the K-Series versus the F and H series, is they have different sides where it sits on because they have different rotations depending on the engine. Okay, so once this H-Series comes out of the car, we need to obviously change out the mounts. So this mount will be changed, the rear engine mount, which you can't see behind the intake manifold, that will be coming out and replaced. Okay, so this mount under the air box right here, a little hard to see, but that mount actually have to be cut out because that's actually welded to the frame rail. So with the house port kit, it comes with a steel mount, and I basically have to cut that one out right there, prep the surface, and I need to weld in the new mount that comes in the house port kit. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. I do have a welder that I haven't opened up yet, I need to do some body repair on the RSX. So this is gonna pose a new challenge for us right here. Even though I bought a welder, so I can get the RSX body repair squared away on the driver's side rear. But anyways, that's the game plan right here, is to weld in a new mount right here. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. And then you got your connection issues, you know, with your radiator, you know, new cooling hoses going to the heater core, you know, back on the firewall. And then the biggest concern I have is electrical. So right here, you got electrical connection, for the motor side right here on the driver's side. And then you got some motor connections right here on the passenger side. So what I believe I've been reading is I need to actually take these harnesses, pull them back into the cab of the vehicle. And same thing on the driver's side, take that harness, pull it back inside the car. And there's actually a tuck harness that's sold. I think Rywire is the one who makes it. So I just hope that I don't have to remove the dashboard from this vehicle, because that's a lot of work. I've done the junkyard and it was not enjoyable, but it can be done. So fingers crossed, I don't have to pull the dashboard on this car. And then obviously the battery's gonna be relocated because the engine's gonna sit real close over here. This air box will be disappearing. Air box will be on that side of the vehicle. And then we got the ABS pump right here. I'm thinking about converting this car back to regular brakes because I don't really drive this car in the rain anyways. So I hope that this is not in the way of the K-Series engine because the case here is gonna sit closer, you know, to the strut tire over here. But if it's not in the way, we'll probably keep it. But, you know, if it is, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And, you know, some things like this cruise control right here, I'll probably remove this from the engine bay, clean it up. But as you can see right here, the electrical for the motor, it goes on the same loom. So I might actually take this loom apart, you know, with the wires and whatnot, pull the motor side into the vehicle and leave the headlight side inside the engine bay. 
I really don't want to do that with tucked wire harness, but you know, if that's the only way to do this, it is what it is. It'd be nice to actually just take a K-series engine and just make the connections right there, the body harness. And then if there's a custom harness that goes on the inside and just plugs right in, it'd be nice. But I don't know the case. I'm still doing research, so just bear with me on the electrical. Okay, working in here on the passenger side floorboard, you got the ECU down there. Now we've got P13 in there right now. Basically that's the VTEC uh, ECU that you need for an H22, so that'll be coming out. And the ECUs that we need is from an 02 to 04 base RSX. You can use a Type S, but you're going to spend a lot of money and there's no benefit to that. Or you can use a 2002 to 2005 EP3 Honda Civic SI ECU. So I think those ECUs have to be sent off to Honda and reflash for K-Pro so you can do the programming and whatnot. So those are the ECUs that I know that are compatible if you're going with the Honda OEM route. And I think brands like, you know, Fuel Tech, and there might be some other brands I'm not aware of, but they might make a whole different wiring harness and, you know, their specific computers to run the thing. But I'm going to try and stick OEM right here. Even though the wiring harness that's going to be custom, it will be a custom made harness. But, you know, if I can run the car on a OEM ECU, I'll be much happier and more confident because I'm not sure what some of the companies have for, you know, long-term reliability for the ECUs. And also with the connector for the ECU, I think that we actually have to use maybe three something like five wires that we had connect to you know for like the fuel pump and whatnot maybe the ignition i'm not sure but like i said i'm still doing research on electrical for this car of what it's going to take to run a k-series because only a few people have done this so far that I know of okay now the biggest question i'm getting asked on instagram and my youtube video comments is why you ban the h22 and go to a k-series and let me go and explain this Okay, the biggest reason we're going from the H22 platform and transitioning over to the K-Series is due to the fact that cylinders number one and two have low compression on this H22. I mean, the car still runs fine, but if you push this thing in VTEC, you can get a small oil leak on the backside of the block. I don't have a flashlight with me right now, but there's a small oil drip that'll accumulate back there. So my understanding on this H22 right here is cylinders one and two have low compression and that's probably due to the fact that the piston rings are worn a little bit rather than number three and four because we got about 20 to 25 percent less compression than what three and four has now in order to fix this properly you're probably going to have to open up this engine replace the piston rings rehome the cylinder walls and whatnot and i'm not sure if i want to put that kind of money in here i mean there's nothing wrong with this h series besides you know the piston ring issue that's probably what it is i haven't done a leak down test on this motor just yet but I'd rather just take the money that I was gonna spend on this H-Series right here and just basically show you guys what it's gonna to take to do a K-Series swap into a CB7 or CB9 platform. And plus, I'm very familiar with the K-Platform with the RSX. I love that car. The thing's got 264,000 miles on it. Knock on wood, that thing doesn't leak a drop of oil, and that thing has been so successful for me over the past 20 years. So I know these K-Series engines are really bulletproof. So I hope that answers your question of why we're getting rid of the H22 and going to the K-Series. Now, one of the biggest questions I got from you guys is now that you got the K24A engine, what are you gonna do with the H22 that's in Project CB9? Let me go and explain. Okay, so the plans with this H22, a lot of you guys have been asking about it. So my plan is, is basically sell the complete swap for a CB platform and sell it off. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, if I'm gonna raffle it off, put on auction, or accept best offers, I have no clue. But that basically will include the engine, the transmission, the exhaust header, all the mounts associated with this, all the wires that needed to be completed for the VTEC. You know, like this custom coupler right here for the air intake. You know, this custom hose right here for the power steering line. And this power steering hose, that will come with it as well. And then you got the wires going from the ECU over the VTEC solenoid, that'll be included as well. The P13 ECU on the floorboard, that'll be included as well. So my idea right here is to sell the complete H22 swap to another CB owner, what's the CB7, CB9, and they can drop it in theirs if they want to run the engine as is, or if they want to open up, replace the piston rings and get that all resolved, it's up to them. But basically make this process as easy as possible because I've done all the legwork with the wiring and whatnot. 
and they don't have to go like source all the parts out you know with the ecu making the wiring harness you know the engine mounts the exhaust header whatever it may be so this is going to be one complete package you know shipped out on a pallet or whatever it is or if someone wants to come pick it up in virginia they're more than welcome so if you guys are interested in this complete h22 swap you know reach out to me you know maybe we can work out a deal i don't know but we'll see what happens all right guys that about wraps up today's video going over the k24a engine and the plans for the k-series swap into project cb9 now please bear with me guys as this swap is going to take quite a bit of time as i gather all the parts and do all the research that's needed especially since Hasport is redeveloping the cord cb mounts and i have no clue when those are due out anyhow if you have any specific questions so far on the k24 engine Please feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer all questions. Hope you guys can stick around as this is going to be an awesome build for sure and I can't wait to walk you through all the steps that's needed. And if you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.